Now Nietzsche's vision of nihilism has an addition to it because he believes that uh, life does not have any meaning because he doesn't think that there's a God to give it that meaning. He thinks that idea of God is sliding away. Um, but he thinks that because of this, this allows us to adopt different frameworks, different perspectives as to how we see the world. So different glasses, if you will, you know, I'll, for maybe I'll, for a couple of years, I'll reject my parents' religious values and put on my atheist goggles. And I see the world now through atheism and I identify with it, but then that doesn't work for me. So I take off my atheist goggles and I become a Buddhist for a couple of years. And then that doesn't work for me, so I say, you know what, I'm going to put my Christian goggles on again. And then I say, you know what, I was wrong. Christianity is what is right for me, or whatever it happens to be. So for Nietzsche, life has no meaning, but we experiment with different frameworks that um, bring us to different ways of seeing things. But crucially, and Nietzsche was a relativist in this way, a moral relativist, there's no ultimate perspective. There's no perspective that's ultimately true or right. It's just a perspective based on the glasses or goggles we're putting on. The instant that I put on those glasses that make me see the world through Christianity, I now start to believe that that world is objective, that those values are actually true. But Nietzsche would say they're not actually objective. They're just true because you put those glasses on and you're seeing the world through that framework. And the same would be true for any religion or political belief system. Right? And it doesn't have to be a religion. It could just be you become a diehard liberal fanatic or conservative fanatic politically or libertarian fanatic. You jump into that frame of seeing things and now you're seeing the whole world through that framework. But again, beneath it all is nothing. There's no meaning beneath it. The meaning comes in once we get in that frame of reference. Right? So it's only meaningful with respect to that frame of reference. So that's why it's a type of relativism because the meaning is relative to the perspective that we choose to take. Deeply, there's no, there's no meaning for Nietzsche. So right and wrong then are relative for Nietzsche. Um, you know, right and wrong conceived in any way, whether we're saying the right political system or the right moral behavior, um, it's all relative for Nietzsche. And, and we experiment with these perspectives. So, the error for Nietzsche, Nietzsche thinks it's good that we experiment, because he'll argue later that that's what um, brings us into the overman, to the sort of advancement of humans to the next stage. It, it's good that we experiment. What's bad is when we experiment and we assume that our perspective is the only right one. Uh, Nietzsche thinks that it's clearly obvious that the, persper the perspectives are just perspectives, right? That it's just a framework to see the world as a Christian or a Muslim or an atheist. And once we start saying, no, atheism is the right only way, or Christianity is the only way to see it, that's when we're in error, and we're not appreciating reality as it is, in Nietzsche's view. Right? So it's okay to adopt perspectives, but we should appreciate they're just perspectives, he thinks. So what led us to nihilism to begin with? How did we, how did we get to the point as a culture where people started saying, there's, there's no meaning to this life, there's no meaning to this anymore? This takes us back to the um, Aristotle's rational soul and Plato's uh, you know, rational soul. Uh, the idea that we as humans have this extra above and beyond ability to reason um, about moral behavior, that we know right from wrong. Nietzsche argues that ever since the scientific revolution, that idea that we can distinguish right from wrong, which is deeply connected to God, all, all of that has been chipped away gradually. And one of the many ways it has been done, Nietzsche said, is that we've discovered our place in the universe is much smaller and much more insignificant than we thought. Right? Now, this is true whether you believe in God or not. It's, it's very clear we know that we are a planet, a small planet, revolving around a big star we call the sun, but that star is one, that sun is one of many, many other stars in a huge, huge universe. Uh, you know, one of millions of other stars just in the Milky Way galaxy, and there are hundreds of thousands of other galaxies with that many stars. That's pretty obscure, right? So in the Middle Ages, the Christian philosophers we looked at in, up until the time of people like Copernicus, before that they believed that we were the center of everything, 
that, like Aristotle believed, there was some, we were a centrally located creation of God. Aristotle didn't believe in God in that way, but Aristotle did believe we were the center. Um, so that was the worldview we had. God was everything. We were the center of the universe. Now imagine the shift from being the center of the universe to not only not being the center, but being a tiny insignificant speck next to the entire planet of the earth is a tiny insignificant speck next to how huge the rest of the universe is, right? It's really quite overwhelming. And so Nietzsche says, and you can see that process in these pictures, the only picture there that's fictional or that's, uh, is the solar system. Um, that's, that's an actual image of the galaxy, and then the one on the right uh, is an image of um, many galaxies. And so this is the universe that we live in. So w we don't seem to be that important. And Nietzsche says, when discoveries like this come about, it's not immediate, it's not direct, but when people hear this, even if they reject it, and many people rejected these discoveries for years, as they still continue to do, it's still chipping away though, right? It's still gradually chipping away. They might say, oh, I'm not gonna believe that. But deep in the back of their mind, they're, they're thinking at least subconsciously, wow, okay, that makes sense. Scientists have discovered this, right? It's, it's hard to, to really truly deny the discoveries of science, especially ones like this, um, where we have images from space and um, NASA that, that help us understand our universe. So new scientific discoveries, Nietzsche says, are chipping away at our belief in God, which is then causing the Jenga piece to fall out so that our whole moral system comes crashing down and it takes us into the stage of nihilism. Um, Nietzsche doesn't say this happens overnight. It's very gradual. Some people come, move away from God more quickly than others. Um, other people cling or stick to the idea of God. And Nietzsche actually calls these weak people versus strong people. He says weak people are those who can't handle that God is dying. And so, you know, kind of like a, a kid who is scared to leave his mother, he clings to God and says, no, I still believe, even though deep down his faith is being eroded and being chipped away. Um, you know, kind of like a piece of driftwood on the beach where the, the ocean, the tide comes in and gradually washes it away. And if you're going every day, you don't even notice that it's actually depleting. That's kind of what Nietzsche says metaphorically is happening to our collective belief in God. It's gradually getting eroded and chipped away as we discover more and more new things. And he says the weak people um, are actually resentful. He, he says they're resentful of the strong people who are able to push away the belief and move on with their lives and move to the next stage. Weak people will cling to the belief in God um, and double down on it and say, yeah, I believe even more now, all according to Nietzsche. Um, so there's an example I have in the reader of um, a kid who I want to say he was 14 or 15 and he had uh, two parents who were very religiously devout and they did not believe much in Western science or in Western medicine. And their son had appendicitis, right, where you need to get your appendix removed. This is an uh, operation that we fully understand now, and people, I just had a friend a year ago or so who had appendicitis, got the appendix removed, and she is perfectly fine. Um, but if you don't do it, you'll die, right? So this is a case where God isn't going to help you. You need to go to the doctor, right? It's not a case where prayer is going to help. But that's exactly what these parents said. They said, well, God will save you, and they prayed for him, and their son died. So that's an example of um, the, the religion and science coming together, where Nietzsche is saying science is overtaking religion, but this is a case where these people were, Nietzsche would call them weak. They were still holding on to that belief in God. Um, they weren't willing to move past and let the scientific evidence guide their life. Um, so, so anyways, that's an example of how tapered this process is. Uh, it's not a clean, linear process gradually more and more people will come to believe less and less in God, all according to Nietzsche, you know, chipping away at that, that original belief. So let me just add one more piece of the puzzle here, um, which is that as technology advances, we are able to explain things in a new way that were once explained by God. Um, and one way you can see this is that if you even took something like just an everyday 7-Eleven lighter 
and you went back, you know, like seven, eight hundred years in time, if you could, if there was some, you know, we had the amazing ability of a time machine, if you went back in time with that lighter, you'd probably be seen as a wizard by some people. What, you can create fire out of your fingers like that? I mean, it would be, it would be incredible. Um, so as we advance technologically, we start explaining things that were once explained by, by God. And uh, this happened very, very specifically and very messily uh, with the Catholic Church versus people like Copernicus and Galileo, who said, hey, we're no longer at the center. I have these observations in my telescope that say the sun is this thing we're revolving around. And there was a huge struggle for power there where the Catholic Church said, no, how dare you question Aristotle and our view. And, um, but guess who won eventually? Science did. And today, the Catholic Church is no longer arguing that we're the center of the universe. Um, right? So as we advance scientifically, the new ideas we discover, the new, the new discoveries often push out um, religious values that we had before. So that's another way that that driftwood is getting eroded, right? It's not just leading us to collapse our moral values, but it's actually changing our beliefs about reality. So an, another example is um, evolution. The central reason people oppose evolution, if they still do today, is because they believe God created us, right? Evolution impinges upon what God supposedly did. That's exactly what Nietzsche is talking about. Uh, people before Darwin believed that um, in the West, mostly, that God created us the way we are. But evolution says, well, actually, the way we came to be what we are is through this very natural, incredibly complex and lengthy process called evolution. That's how we came to be how we are. And that clashes with the idea that God created us as we are, um, you know, at least uh, on its face. And so that's an example of how scientific discoveries are eroding that need to believe. And what's even crazier is that today, scientists are discovering that we have moral roots in our, in our behavior, that um, morality can be explained in some ways, some aspects of morality can be explained through scientific observation and reason. Uh, and not only that, but um, ape societies and, and, you know, gorillas and monkeys and whatnot seem to have some basic level of moral behavior that seems to be more advanced in us, right? So these are all ways that new scientific discoveries are impinging upon what religion used to explain. Um, and of course, the Big Bang is another example, right? That uh, if God created the universe, well, was it the Big Bang? You know, did God start the Big Bang? Um, Right. Now, now, some of this comes down to how you define uh, the difference between religion and science. Right? So some people argue that there's a, there's a phrase called, from this guy Stephen Jay Gould, uh, it's called non-overlapping magisteria, meaning th th there's two realms that don't go together. So he argued that reason and science could not go together. Nietzsche argues that they can. Um, but there do seem to be cases where one impinges upon the other. Nietzsche, let me just sum it up, Nietzsche is saying that the idea of God is being killed in our minds. It's not dead yet, but it's dying. And he would say today it's continuing to die. The more we discover, the more we learn about our world, the less need we have to explain things with religious values and meaning and God per se, um, which for Nietzsche allows us to advance to the next stage.